College can be stressful even at the best of times, so the college party is a great way to unwind and relax away from the stress of daily college activities, if only for a few hours. The most notable of these parties comes at the end of the school year as a celebration of making it through yet another term. But sometimes these parties can become chaotic with so many different types of people congregating in the tight confines of a home, especially when alcohol is involved. Most of the time, it's nothing but the occasional fight or argument and nothing more. But every once in a while, things can take a much darker turn. In the case of Matthew de Grude, his life would take that dramatic turn when he showed up at a college party in April of 2014 and proceeded to stab five people with a kitchen knife to death only blocks away from the University of Calgary. This is the story of Matthew de Grude and the case of the college party murders. To Calgary, where a party to mark the end of the school year turned tragic. Five university students are dead, brutally stabbed in the early hours of this morning. Here's how it happened. Matthew de Grud was, in many ways, your average 22-year-old. He was a student of the University of Calgary in Canada and was planning to attend law school after finishing up there. He also worked at a local grocery store and by all accounts seemed fairly normal. But in the weeks leading up to the murders, Matthew's behavior had begun to change. His parents, friends, and classmates would all later note that Matthew was different and that his attitude and demeanor had rapidly shifted. Matthew had also begun to post far more frequently to his Facebook page, his posts becoming more and more bizarre and strange. And only hours before the murders, he would post a status to Facebook that read, Dread and the Fugitive Mind. The world needs a hero. Within hours, five people would be dead in what would be considered the worst mass homicide in Calgary's recorded history. This all made even more striking as Matthew was the son of a respected police officer who had served with the city for 33 years. Now it should be noted that Matthew was an invited guest to the party, so no one was surprised by him showing up. The attack itself took place around 1.20 a.m shortly after Matthew arrived. There were about 30 people in attendance at the time of the murders. Shortly after Matthew arrived, he would locate a large knife within the home and begin stabbing, seemingly at random, those at the party. But while the victims may have been chosen at random, Matthew's attacks were methodical. Each of the five victims, Zachariah Rathwell, 21, Jordan Segura, 22, Joshua Hunter, 23, Caitlin Paris, 23, and Lawrence Hong, 27, were stabbed multiple times as if Matthew intended to kill every person he encountered before moving on to the next. Three of the victims would be pronounced dead at the scene, with two later succumbing to wounds in hospital. Matthew seemed to have every intention to take the lives of these innocents, but the reasons for the murder still remain unclear. Soon after the attack, Matthew fled the party on foot, but his freedom would only last about 40 minutes before a police canine unit would help track him down. He was then arrested 
and eventually remanded to a secure psychiatric facility for evaluation. Matthew would end up being charged with five counts of first-degree murder and would eventually be declared fit to stand trial after a 30-day psychiatric evaluation. That said, he would be sent to the Southern Alberta Forensic Psychiatric Center until it would be deemed that his mental health had improved. Reporters would ask Matthew's lawyer why it was that his client was considered fit to stand trial, but also sent back to a psychiatric facility. He noted that, you have to keep in mind that being fit to stand trial only means that he understands the process and can instruct counsel. You can still be profoundly mentally ill and fit to stand trial. What made things difficult in this case was that investigators could not find any reason or motivation for the murder spree. Matthew was an invited guest and none of the witnesses saw any sort of confrontations prior to the attacks. There was also no drug or alcohol impairment found within his system. This forced the investigation to shift its focus onto Matthew's mental state rather than on any direct motive. Police Chief Rick Hansen noted that the suspect arrived at the party, obtained a large knife, and targeted the victims one by one, stabbing them several times. Neighbors would note that the party itself seemed very normal and relaxed. One said, They were just kind of hanging out, had a fire pit going, had a few beers. They weren't loud at all whatsoever. During the eventual trial, two expert forensic psychiatrists testified, with one stating that Matthew was clearly psychotic when the attack took place in the home, and the other agreeing and diagnosing Matthew with schizophrenia. Dr. Lenka Zedkova, the second forensic psychiatrist, told the jury that de Grud said the voice of the sun god told him, kill them all before they kill you, and to him it marked the beginning of the war. She continued by saying he intended to kill these individuals because he believed his life was in danger and they were about to kill him. The doctor also stated that Matthew understood that he was stabbing and killing his victims, but that what he was doing to him was not morally wrong. Information was later introduced about Matthew's versions of events leading up to the murders, as documented by Dr. Alberto Choi, an expert witness specializing in forensic psychiatry. Mr. DeGrood recounted that on 14 April 2014, he went to work as usual, but had known that the world was going to end that day. He purchased garlic to protect himself because the vampires and werewolves were on the side of evil. As he spoke to Zachariah, he began to believe that Zachariah himself was a werewolf as they discussed the end of the world. He indicated that he felt Zachariah was arguing with him, but he felt immediately threatened when he stated that Maybe you'll die before me. It was at this point that Mr. DeGrood decided to go to the kitchen, grab the knife to arm himself before Zachariah could attack him. For his part, Matthew DeGrood would plead not guilty to the five counts of first degree murder. In the end, Matthew would be found not criminally responsible for the stabbing deaths 
of the five victims. The judge in the case noting that Matthew had lost touch with reality. It should be noted that a not criminally responsible or NCR verdict is not an acquittal and one used to ensure people with mental disorders are treated and not punished. There will be no risk to the public and Matthew would be secured inside a treatment facility. But in late 2019, a review board found that Matthew could be eased back into the community. With approval, Matthew will be able to leave Alberta Hospital in Edmonton unsupervised for outings. And with supervision, he could spend up to three days at a time in the city. The Alberta Review Board also noted that Matthew will be able to travel within Alberta for up to a week as long as the trip has been okayed and that he is with a responsible adult. The ruling also opened the door for him to move into a 24-hour supervised group home. But during June of 2020, conservative Calgary MP Stephanie Cousy came forward asking for review of the board's decision to release individuals, including Matthew, back into the community. The MP noted that families of Matthew's victims still believe he is high risk. The families of the victims joined the MP for her press conference. It is unclear what will happen next, as Matthew has already been granted unsupervised visits into the city. But he is scheduled to have another hearing before the review board in late 2020. <laughs>